is a problem where we are given some information about a hydroelectric power plant. Specifically, we're showed this, we are shown this water element, which is in green, right? This is our water. And this represents, this box represents a simplification of the water. We imagine that the water is just this box. And we have to find uh, a few things. How much energy is stored in this particular box of water? What's the energy? And of course, we know that the energy stored is gravitational potential energy. So the energy we'll find is PEG specifically. That's the type. Then we also are asked to find the power delivered as this box of water flows down the spout here toward a turbine, or turbine if you prefer. And the power, we're given a couple of other things which will help us find uh, the power. We're given the fact that water flows out. Well, all we're told is that water flows out at a rate of one meter cubed per second. So what is the given? What's this value? The top has units of meters cubed. That's volume. The bottom has units of time. time. Uh, it has seconds, so that's time. So a meter cubed per second is just the volume over time. And it's how much volume passes through in one second. Any ratio you can think of as the corresponding values with the passage of one second, we get um, one meter cubed flowing out or through my spout here. Okay. That's how you think about these ratios, especially time ratios, like something over time. It's how much you get when one second passes. They are corresponding values. Okay, the last thing that we know is the density of water. We use rho for density, and that is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. I'm already low on space. First, we need the gravitational potential energy. We know the equation is mgh, but we have a couple, we have two different heights here. This height, 75 meters, is from the spout to the bottom of our water element, and this 100 meters is from the top of our water element to the spout. So water starts here about halfway through, and it flows down the full spout length, and then encounters the turbine. So which do we use? Do we use 75 meters or 100 meters? Well, the spout, we assume, is positioned smack dab between the two. So the height that we use is the average height. The height is going to be 100. We must use the average. OK, and this gives us 175 over 2. And that's 87.5 meters. Okay. Now, what? so we know, we know the value of H. We know the value of G. Can we calculate the gravitational potential energy? No, because first we have to find the mass. Now, we are given the density. Right? That's this. And we also can find the volume of the water element because we know all of the dimensions. This is 2,000. The water's height is going to be 100, right? 100 minus 75. This minus this gives us the height. Oops. So this height is 25 meters. And we know the width, it's 100. Uh, sorry, 1,000. So we know the volume, we know the density, we can easily find the mass. Here's how you do that. Density is mass over volume, so we can input 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Right. Let's go ahead and use units. The mass is our unknown. The volume is just the base. 
uh, let's say, let's call it the length, 2,000 meters, times the height, 25 meters, times the width, 1,000. associated with this volume uh, of our element based on the density, rho. So 5 times 10 to the 5. And now we know the last thing from the gravitational potential energy equation. We know mass and we can calculate. We just found the mass to be 5 times 10 to the 10 to the 10. I think I misspoke just now. That's the value we calculated. Right. Yep. We know. And actually here in IB physics we use 9.8. Because we are international and the last digit fluctuates internationally. it falls 87.5 that's the average height that we fall down as we go down this pipe this uh, tube so we plug it into our calculator we calculate what do we get 4.29 E13 a kilogram meter per second squared that's the unit of mass times acceleration so a kilogram meter per second squared then must be a newton and it is and a newton times a meter well we know that work cosine theta, so the unit of work is joules, therefore newton times meter, force times distance gives us joules. So yes, the correct unit is joules here. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next question. I'm going to find the power, the power. We found the potential energy stored in our water element, our uh, box-shaped water element, onto power. power. We know that power is equal to, our equation for power, is energy over time, and of course the energy that we have here is potential energy, gravitational potential energy. So we can plug that in for the equation. Let me show the step of plugging in that. There we are. Potential energy is mgh. And look at this. We're going to have a rate. We will either have a rate of mass per time, or we'll have a rate of g per time. Well, that doesn't make sense. Or we'll need to use, in our solution, a rate of height per time. And that doesn't make too much sense either. The one that makes most sense is mass per time. We're going to make that a rate. How much mass flows out in a second? How many kilograms? Another clue that you need to use this mass per time rate, another clue, is the fact that we're given the volume per time was given as a meter cubed per second. So if we know volume per time, how would we find, what would we have to do to find mass per time? Well, if 
we were given volume over time, we would have to cancel out volume and replace it with mass to get the mass rate, the rate at which mass flows. And mass over volume is rho, the density. So we now have just made up an equation for ourselves. Oops, I forgot to cancel this out. Forgot to erase this. We've just produced our own, our very own equation, which we're going to have to use to solve this problem. And this is one of the things that dimensional analysis uh, is good for. So the volume per time, a given, when multiplied by rho, is the mass flowing per second, the kil number of kilograms per second. So let's calculate the mass per second, the kilograms per second that flows through the spout, or out of the spout, or however you want to describe it. V over T was given as a meter cubed per second. The density of water is a known value. That's something we've memorized, a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. What do we get as our mass rate? Notice that the meters cubed cancel. We get the same exact thing. That is convenient. A thousand kilograms per second is m over t. So the power then is a thousand kilograms per second. I'm going to leave off units because I'm out of. halfway between 75 and 100, right? That was 87, whoop, 87.5 was our height, our average. calculating this out, taking the product is 875 watts. Watt is the unit of power, right? Or uh, we, uh, we know, we don't usually write it this way, um, but we know that a watt is equal to a joule per second. So that's the power. The power that is provided by the water as it flows down and out of the spout toward the turbine. 